you want to learn Flutter in just 15 minutes, well, this is the right video for you. I'm going to cover all the steps you need to get you started for your first Flutter project. I can assure you by following these simple steps I will show you in a bit, you will become a Flutter expert in no time. Okay, so you've successfully created your first Flutter project and they give you this boilerplate and you might be wondering like, what is all this? So let's just remove it and I'm gonna start from scratch so you guys can understand what's actually going on under the hood. So Flutter starts with uh, defining a void method that is your main method and this is gonna return a run app which is necessary for all Flutter applications. And this is gonna return your main class which is called my app. So let's start by creating this and you can type, I type st less for stateless widgets. This is a shortcut in Flutter that shows you, um, that creates this boilerplate for you. So we can copy or my app in here. Let's just paste it. Um, so at the top of the application, we want to return a material app. And the material app is something in Flutter. Uh, every unique app in Flutter should only have one material app. And this is uh, stacked at all the way at the top of your application. And we should always keep this file or this class quite tidy, quite empty. And uh, what they mostly do in material apps is that they specify a team or team data. And we can uh, set the team data to, to dark, or by default, it is set to team data that light. If you want to overwrite text uh, values or text you're going to use in your app, we can use that by extending the dark dot copy width, and then you would set a text team and you would create that object. And we can set um, body text, for example, and we can uh, specify a specific style uh, to here. And let's say we want a text style of um, with a font size of 12. And I'm going to say a color of colors dot um, colors dot black, for example, and a font weight of font weight dot bold. And I'm going to going to put a comma and putting comma after all the parentheses is going to result in a nice little tree. And in Flutter, if you're new to Flutter, everything in Flutter is a widget, right? And everything you stack in the widget is going to be part of the widget tree in short, basically. So let's use another team as well. We can uh, copy that text style. And uh, let's say I want to specify a display one. So this is going to be another text style. And we can use for the counter value we will be creating. And it's going to be quite big. So this should be, let's take it white. And let's take the font weight to be the maximum is W900. So let's create the home uh, value of our material app. And then here we would actually specify our home view, right? And we can say, okay, let's give it a title. Um, and that title should be uh, Flutter in 15 minutes. Um, now let's go outside of the, the class. And let's create another STLS. You can see stateful or stateless, and we're going to see the difference in a bit. So there's always two type of widgets you can create. So we can create a stateless widget, which is going to create again the boilerplate. It's going to override, and it's going to give a build method for the widget tree, basically. So let's copy, uh, let's take that home view, and let's use uh, the title we provided in here. And we can use that by setting a final val variable. It's going to be of type string, and it's going to take the title. Then we need to set up a constructor so you can actually pass it in like you would do in a sort of function. But in this case, it is our class constructor. And you would say this.title. Remember to put the curly braces inside of the parentheses like so. And now we can create our scaffold. And our scaffold is something that has access to an app bar. Uh, which again is of type object app bar itself. 
and every app bar can have a title and the title is going to be a widget and we can take the string we just provided in here and now we can do command s or press this little thunder icon in here to do a hot reload so remember there's two types of restarting your app there's the hot restart which uh, restarts the whole application and there's the hot reload which just is going to reload everything that's inside of this build method or inside of this uh, build method and uh, you're going to see why it's really handy in a bit so let's also create in our scaffold we can have a body and a body again is a, is a widget in the widget tree and our body should be of type column why is, what is a column really? A column is stacking items or widgets in a vertical way, up or down, while as a row is stacking them horizontally, so on the x-axis or on the y-axis of the column. So a column thereby takes a property called children. And we can specify children. Let's say our texts, and we're gonna say tapped button this many times. And in here we can set our style and we can set, okay, the theme we provided in the material app can be of the type team of dot context and then uh, we can set it to text theme dot body one. And if I do a command S or I press the thunder icon, it's gonna appear right at the top here. But let's center the column and by wrapping it in a new widget, we can press alt enter and then we can select wrap with center and this is gonna center your widget and it's going to add the parentheses by itself so you don't need to type them manually. What you also want to specify in the column is the main axis alignment. This will assure uh, that it's getting, uh, that it's getting uh, vertically aligned as well. So here we go. Let's add the second item of the column by copying this text like so and then here we want to specify our counter value which for the moment I'm going to use just at a static and it's going to be display one. So this is here. Let's start by adding our buttons. So where should we add our buttons? Because we're working in a scaffold widget, we can add a floating action button. And because we're going to have more than one, I want to wrap this in a row because we want to stack them on a horizontal way. So I'm going to type in a row. The row is going to have some children which is going to be the floating action button. Every floating action button uh, can have a child. So I'm going to start by creating the first one and it's going to be of type icon. And the child is going to be widget, so it can be really any widget you want. But for us, it's going to be an icon. So I'm going to type icons.add, like so. This is going to align it a bit strange, but we can solve that very easy with adding again a main axis alignment. And the main axis alignment is going to be of type end. If you see a yellow border underneath a widget, it means there's a missing, and you can see it in a dart analysis. The parameter on press is required. Whenever something is required, you obviously need to type it in. But let's just for now create an anonymous function that's not going to do anything. Let's copy all this uh, floating action button. Let's put a comma behind these parentheses. And I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna add it three times because we are gonna have three buttons. So the next one is gonna be, uh, the last one is gonna be the add button. The before that is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna remove. And this is gonna be a refresh button. Which is gonna hot reload. And you can see how uh, we can actually add some padding to it by adding a size box widget, which you can uh, place in between the children of a column or a row. And you can specify a width value of 10, put a comma behind here, and we can copy it another time. So it's happening two times. Let's co press command S and we can see the effects happening. Now, because we're working in a stateless widget at the moment, the state won't be updating. And an easy fix for this is you can press Alt, Enter, and we can convert this to a stateful widget. Now, underneath our home view state, we can create a private variable for our counter. And private variables are always declared 
would specify an underscore in front of the name. An example, this would be a public variable, but we're going to make it private. We are going to have to set a method that is going to say increase counter. And a void method, if you're not used to this, it's not returning anything, it's just doing a simple action. What is going to happen in our increase counter? It's going to update our counter with one. You can say plus plus, or you can say plus is one. In order to make this actually updating the state, we need to make use of something that comes with a stateful widget, and it's called a set state method. A set state method is going to rebuild everything underneath the build function. Now we still need to use that counter value in our text widget, which you specified in here, because the text is currently set to null. To add a variable in between these uh, columns or semicolons, we can, uh, you need to add a dollar sign, and then we can use the counter value. So now if I'm hot reloading the app, it's gonna give the same result, but when I'm pressing the plus icon, it's gonna increase. Now, let's add functionality for the, my, uh, the decrease values and the reset values as well. So we can simply copy our methods, and instead of increasing, we wanna decrease, and the counter decrease should be counter uh, min min, so counter goes minus one every time you press the button. But we only want this to happen when the counter is bigger than null, so it can't go negative. Let's test if this is actually working, and we can go to our remove value, decrease counter, Let's just hot reload because we're also doing stuff outside of the build methods. We are adding and we are removing and it can't go below null. Now we still need to add the reset, which is going to be fairly easy. We can copy the increase methods like so. And then we can say reset or counter. And this will just simply say counter will be null. Now we can use the reset counter in the refresh and put it in the unpressed uh, methods in the floating action button. Now let's hot restart. And if everything's working fine and we did everything perfect, this should reset to null. Now let's add something other to it. We can use um, the background color. Let's say we want to update the background color every time the counter changes. So let's say I just want to simply create a list of colors, and I want to use this color in my background color, and I want to make use of that counter value, but I want I want to make sure the remainder of my color, that length, will be the same. So if I'm if I'm hot restarting the app, the app's gonna start on the first index, but I'm adding items, and if in the last one it's gonna uh, the remainder basically solves the issue of that your array index is not correct and it's going to reset the index after the last one. So now we got an app that says this. Let's say we want to add the app bar. We don't want a background color here, for example, and we can say, okay, colors dot transparent. And then the elevation, an elevation on app bar is basically that little drop shadow you see in here. And it's, it, it expects you entering a float value. And we can say 0, 0. And now the app bar is going to be gone. So a quick recap of what you've learned so far by using Flutter. We've started with our main material app that has a home. And in the home, we are specifying our main home view class. And in that class, which is a stateful widget, because we're updating the counter value, or decreasing counter value or resetting the counter values, we have a scaffold. And the scaffold contains our app bar all the way at the top. Uh, it contains a body, which is going to be our text. And uh, that's going to say, you have tapped this button this many times. And that's going to be our counter value. And all the way at the bottom, we got the floating, floating action buttons, which is resulting in a row of our three buttons we created which own have their own functionality for increasing, decreasing, or resetting the counter value. So I can assure you, if you get comfortable 
but using these kind of things, uh, this kind of functionality, this kind of state, using set state, then you can move on to more advanced topics like uh, provider or block for state management, uh, do some networking maybe. But firstly, you need to master uh, this kind of skill set uh, before you even continue to, to uh, create more complex or advanced widgets. So this is really the base of Flutter. And that's basically it. Also guys, uh, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to stay updated on the latest videos I'm posting for you. See you later.